Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating this uh, study lamp here from scratch, okay? It comes in multiple parts and we're going to be starting here in this video with the base piece and then in other videos when you progress onto those we're going to obviously be doing the arm of the lamp and then the hood of the lamp here and maybe the little connector as well, okay? So there's multiple parts to this one, it's very much an advanced solid works um, kind of uh, exercise so we're going to start here straight away, so I'm just going to open up this into the very start piece, okay? We're going to go along with the instructions and we're going to follow it then on SOLIDWORKS. So with SOLIDWORKS already opened, and I'm just gonna open up a little folder here. So in my fifth year SOLIDWORKS, I'm gonna go into, I'll just save it into completed here. Wherever you're saving your stuff, I'm gonna create a folder in here, and we're going to go new folder, and we're gonna call this study lab, okay? Anything that I create inside there is going to be put in there. Just capital L. Okay. So, with my SOLIDWORKS open, I'm going to go up here, File, New, Part, click OK. Okay. So, first of all, it's telling us here we want to create the base piece. You can see what's happening here. So, it says here, um, create a sketch on the top plane in the design tree and draw a circle having 180 millimeters diameter extrude by 15. Circle 180 diameter on the top plane extrude it by 15. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So top plane, sketch, go up to my sketch tools, circle, starting with the origin, smart dimension, 180 millimeters. Really easy, sketch is fully defined. Okay, that's our first step. Now we want to go to our features toolbar, extrude boss base, and instead of 10, blind condition, but instead of 10, I want that to be 15 millimeters. So accept this with the green arrow. Okay, that is the first section of it done. As always, I would advise you to rename your features, okay? So right here, I'm gonna click on, and I'm gonna rename it. I'll just call it um, lamp circle just based on the shape of it base okay so that's renamed now what we're going to do is if I just refer back out here I'm not going to go over and back the whole time I'll just refer back every now so often on a plane 50 millimeters above the top plane sketch the point as shown so they're asking us to do a point 50 millimeters above the top plane sketch the point as shown in the features command select lock boss base command and select the edge of the circle and the point and then on the left hand side there's certain constraints we have to go with okay so i need to set up a new plane 50 millimeters above the top plane so to do that you go up to your features toolbar go to reference geometry plane and now it's asking me for my first reference so my first reference i'm going to come over here to my design tree which is now out here select the front sorry not the front plane apologies the top plane and that distance that I want it to be, I want it to be 50 millimeters, except that it's already 50 for me. If it's not 50 for you and it says something like 20, it might look something like that. Just make sure you change that dimension there, 50, green arrow to accept. And you can see here now it's called plane 1. I want to now sketch on plane 1, so select the plane and select sketch. And right here in the origin, I'm going to go up to my sketch toolbar, click on the point, and draw a point right on the origin. Okay, there's a little sketch. You might realize it doesn't look like much, but there's a sketch. Okay, I'm now going to exit my sketch, so clicking on this little blue icon here, not the red one. Okay, I have a little point there. Now, what I want to do is I want to create, I'm actually going to hide the plane now. So I'll click on the plane and hide. You can see the point is floating there in midair. So what I want to do now is I want to go to my loft boss base command. So features, lofted boss base. I'm going to select the perimeter of the circle, not the face, the perimeter, or the circumference, I should say. And I'm going to select this point here. And you can see it's kind of making a structure. Now we want to alter that structure. So to alter that structure, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our start end constraints and, and select the down arrow here, not guided curves. I'll close that one for now. We've used that one in a previous video, but start end constraints. Okay, you can see there I've got a start constraint and an end constraint. If I select the start constraint, you can see here it's after opening up a couple of options to me. None, direction to vector, normal to profile, tangency, curvature. You'll see here with none, it's just going to stay like it is. If I do direction to vector, nothing's really happening there unless I apply some uh, changes down here. 
normal to profile it's giving me a different kind of curvature a little bit too rounded tangency to face looks a bit better curvature to face looks a little bit lower and it's a bit too pointy at the top so the one we want to select here is uh, tangency to face okay it's going to say next face and you can see here it's going to give us some dimensions you can see one if i start clicking up it's going to go 1.1 .1, and notice how the bulge is starting to change now we don't want that you can see there we simply want to leave that at one okay for the end constraint what we want to do is we're going to change this to normal to profile and it's going to just change ever so slightly so for the end constraint if i had none notice the little change there it kind of looks a slight bit pointy at the top so for the end i want to go normal to profile and it's after giving me a nice smooth curve there at the top okay so there is our kind of lofted feature i'm going to click on the green arrow to accept and simply once again rename that i'm going to call that um lamp base i'll call it the feature loft and there we go okay there's two features renamed that's the first bit that we wanted to do okay referring back out here again so the next thing we're going to do is on the top plane draw the sketch shown using the spleen command some teachers call it a spline add the dimensions mirror about the center line so you can see here on the top plane we're going to do a sketch from the center line we're going to do um a center sorry a center line going from left to right from the origin and then we're going to do a spleen in here okay and we're going to apply these dimensions to it okay and i'm going to show you how to dimension a spleen as well so we get it fully defined okay so here's the dimensions and i'll be referring to these obviously in the solidworks video and then the overall we want to get this shape here okay so first of all i want to select the top plane select sketch okay now looking down the top lane the first thing i'll do is in my sketch toolbar i'm going to grab a center line from the origin click try to get all the way out to the left make sure your line is horizontal click press escape to deactivate your tool now we want to go to our sketch toolbar and i'm going to get here a spleen so click on the spleen tool it's there and i'm going to start around here click i'm going to do another point up about here click and a point down about here make sure you don't map onto the midpoint of the line you can go out here i'm going to go in about here click and you can see the spleen is still active it's waiting for me to click again to deactivate it just press escape and there's my spleen okay now i want to apply some dimensions to that so the first ones i'm going to do is just the easy ones i want to click on this point and this point the distance between those is meant to be 35. i want the distance between this point and this point the two points at the bottom of the spleen to be 50. and i also want the distance from the top of the spleen down to here i want the height of the spleen to be 50. okay you can see it's kind of a little bit angled as well and i want the distance from the top point here you can see that point again make sure you get the point to the origin i want that distance to be 60. and you can see there it's actually coming in fully defined however it's still not got the curvature if i just refer out it's not got the curvature that i want you can see it's kind of more bulgy there okay so you can see there i'm actually dimensioning it obviously with obviously my various lengths and heights okay but i need to now actually change the spleen to what i want so when i select the spleen you'll see here we've kind of got these handles they're kind of in gray okay now if i select the handle okay i can actually dimension it but the first thing i want to do is i'm actually going to click on it and grab it and notice how the spleen starts to change shape click and hold on this little handlebar here but what i want to do is i want to make sure that handle is vertical so when i click and drag it notice over here little windows popped up i want that to be vertical so if i select vertical it goes vertical i want to do the exact same with this one click and drag it but i want it to be vertical as well and then this one up here you can see it's kind of off kilter it's not exactly horizontal i'm going to click and drag it and you'll see then i want it to be horizontal so i'll make this one horizontal okay it's starting to take more of a shape that i want the next thing i want to do is i want to dimension those so smart dimension and i want the distance if i click on this guy just click on it anywhere at all and you can see it's giving you a length there i'm going to change that to 80 i'll just go with what it says on the sheet you can see it reduces the height of it click on this one drag down anywhere i want that to be 80 reduces finally click on this one this one is also 80. And there you go now we are fully dimensioned okay the object is fully dimensioned it was already fully defined when with our previous dimensions but we're after conforming it to the way we want it 
Now I want that exact shape. Instead of doing all that again, I'm just going to mirror that about. So mirror entities, entities to mirror, select the spleen, mirror about, select this line. There we have it, except it with the green arrow. Okay, now that sketch is actually on the bottom. It's on the top plane. Okay, so you see what we're going to do here now. We're going to do what's known as a split line. Okay, so I'll just refer out to the, I'm gonna exit my sketch there. My sketch is still there, it's at the bottom. You can see it's visible. Okay, we're referring out here. So in the features tab, this is a new, t uh, um, a new trick now that we're learning. Under the curve command, select split line. So on the screen, select face to split. Okay, so what we're going to do is, in the features tab, so I'll just refer out here to the next page, and then we're going to get onto a surface offset. So in the features tab, what we want to do is we want to go to curves, so features, curves, split line. Now what we want to do is, in here it's asking you to select the sketch. So to select the sketch, I can select it from here. Okay, I could alternatively select it from here as well. And then the face I'm going to select, it's asking me to select the face. We want projection. I'm going to select this face here. And what I want to do is select the green arrow to accept. And notice what's after happening is, the sketch that we drew down here is after being projected onto this curved surface. Okay, a really, really handy tool there using that split line. Okay, so we're not going to rename that. I'll just leave the split line. Where all we're going to do is we're really going to rename. I might actually, I might say, rename that there. And I'll just call it button because there's going to be a button there. Button space, I'll say. Button space split line. Okay, so there's our split line done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a new tab here. We mainly use obviously the features, the sketch. Now we're going to use the surfaces tab. So if you click on surfaces, <clears throat> the surface we're going to use is, we're going to use this thing here called an offset surface, sometimes called a surface offset as well. So if I select this guy here, it's going to ask me to select the surface. Now the surface I want to select is this face there. Now look, when I selected it, because we selected offset surface, you can see here, there's another surface after bulging out from it. You can see it there. I don't want that to be 10 millimeters. Look, if I change it to five, it goes in. If I change it to 20, it goes out, okay? I simply want that to be zero, okay? Now, you might wonder why we've done the zero, but you'll see in a second when we want to thicken and why we did that. So essentially, I'm after creating a new surface there, but that surface is sitting directly on the surface I wanted it on, okay? There's no height or dimension or any gap. Literally, you can see the gap there. I don't want the gap. I want that to be zero, but I've created a new surface. Now, what's important to note here, and we refer to this in other videos, in our solid bodies, we've now actually got this thing here called a surface body, and there it is, okay? Because we're after creating a surface on our object. And here's our surface offset. Now, it says there, if I, sorry, if I just refer out to the, in the surfaces tab, we wanted to select the surface offset, select the face, and select zero. But then, still in the surfaces tab, select the thicken tool and thicken by four millimeters, okay? Untick the merge result box. And now when we get into the thicken, I'll explain what these boxes are, and I'll talk to, obviously we'll set our distance there and then the merge results, okay? So, what we want to do is we're still in our surfaces tab. We're going to thicken now, thicken is over here. First thing I want to do is I want to select my offset, my surface offset, which is this one, that's in there. Now you've got a couple of options here. The first thing I'll do is I'll change this to four millimeters. I'll untick the merge result box because I'm actually creating something that's separate from the body. Now, I've unticked the merge results. Essentially, if I wanted to thicken something, this one is thickening, you can see here, thicken side two, thicken both sides, and this one say thicken side one. And you can see here, it's kind of hard to see, but you have a blue line, a black line is in the middle, and then a gray line. Where it's gray, it's not going to happen. The blue line here basically means is, if I select this one, watch this, and it's four millimeters, you can see it's going to thicken out four millimeters. But this time, instead of just being a surface, it's actually going to be a whole body, okay? I don't want to thicken it outwards. I actually want to not thicken it. This one will do both ways, both out and in. Whereas if I select this one, it's actually going to go into the object. I know we can't see it right now, but you'll see in a second why we've done this. So I want to select the green arrow to accept that. Very important, untick your merge results. Click the green arrow to accept. 
we're after doing the ticking there. Now, if I go into my section view, I'll just accept that, you can actually see it's after going into it four millimeters. Okay, that's kind of where it's becoming more evident now. So we're after thickening in four millimeters. Okay, so that's what's after happening there. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this and we're going to do an indent. Okay, so to search for indent, it's actually up here. You might actually have to go up here to search commands. So it's very important when you're going up here to search, I'll get rid of that. You have a little search toolbar up here. Now, if your search toolbar says SOLIDWORKS help, click on the, the, the down arrow and click on commands. Now we're going to search for a command and the command we want to select is indent, another new tool. You can see indent starts to pop up, so I'm going to select this. Our indent tool is now here. Now what we want to do is we want to actually create a gap between this surface here, the new section for where we're going to be putting a button and the main body. So my target body, I'm actually going to select, my target body is this guy. So in my target body region, I'm going to select outside here. So don't select anywhere inside this sketch, okay, or where we're going to be creating that gap. I'm going to select here. And you can see it's saying target body there. My tool body, I want to select in here. There's my tool body region. And it's very important here, I select cut. Okay, and you can see the shape now. I'm cutting between the target I want to cut and the body that I'm using to create that cut width. And the reason we thickened it, now it knows what to use to actually cut around. So we have to thicken the surface and it's gone down. Now our distances are down here. Okay, this was set previously, so I think it's zero point. If I set it to 0 0.5, you'll see what will happen. If I just zoom in there, it's going to cut five millimeters away, 0 0.5 millimeters away. If I do two, you can see it goes further away, but the distance I just want is 0.2. And you can see there's a little gap. That gap there is 0.2 millimeters away. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to accept that with the green arrow to accept. Okay, and what you'll notice is we've got a little gap in there now. Once again, if I put on my section view, now we've actually got a little gap in here and it's gone the whole way around. It's kind of shown us that we kind of have a button feature or something like that where we're going to be putting in a button. Okay, now that I've done that, <laughs> we want to actually hide this surface here. So I'm going to click on this guy and click on hide. And you can see there now it's after exposing the area that I want. Untick my. So we're after literally to do that, if I just do that again, the indent, and sorry, it's the ticking one. I want to show that. So if you want to get rid of that, come over to your thicken here and click hide. Or alternatively, you could have done what I did, which was I just clicked on this surface here and then clicked on hide. So click on it and hide. Okay, there we go. There is uh, kind of our section done there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename these. So the surface I said I'm not going to rename. What I'm just going to do here is I'm going to call it, instead of thicken, I'm just going to call it button thicken. Always getting into the habit of renaming your features. And then what we're going to do is once again rename the indent and we'll call it button indent. And it doesn't matter if it says one, okay, because it will just come up. If we do it again, it will go number two and so forth. So there we have it. We've done quite a little bit of a complex kind of work there, some new tools we're after using. Now what we're going to do is we want to start with the on-off button. Okay, so it says here, on the top plane, draw the ellipse to the given dimensions, select split line, and select uh, the sketch and the face to split. Very similar to what we did previously at the very start where we did the split line tool and we got the... Uh, kind of curve projected onto the surface. So we have to draw an ellipse here that is 24 long, 18 high, and 60 from the origin on the top plane. So that's what we're going to do. So, top plane, sketch. I'm actually sketching underneath here, on the top plane. So, just make sure I have the right side, yeah. So in my sketch toolbar, I'm going to go to my center line. From the origin, I'm going to do a center line all the way over to here again. Press escape to deactivate your tool. Now I'm going to go to my ellipse tool, so sketch. I'm going to go to my ellipse. And what I want to do now is somewhere in here, I'm going to do a line like this out to there and then drag my ellipse up here like that and click. Okay. In my sketch toolbar again, get a center line. I want to do a vertical line from this node to this node. Now I want to dimension that. So sketch, smart dimension, the distance from this node, click on the node and click on this node, 
I want them distances there to be 24. I want this one, click on the line, I want this to be, I think it's 18, yeah. And then I want the distance from the center to here to be 60. And you can see here, we're now fully defined. It's gone from blue to black. Happy with that? Exit your sketch by clicking on the blue tick here. Okay, and once again, note that the sketch is on the bottom. So what we're going to do now is going to use the split line again, features, curves, split line, select your sketch. So I'm just going to select this surface, select the face you want to do it to. I'm now going to select this face. I want it to be projected onto that face. And there we go. And there is our, um, where we're going to be putting a button. Okay, so we're after using these tools already. Now we're going to use them again. So just going to switch over my page. Now what we want to do, just make sure I haven't skipped a step, no, I'm happy with that. We're going to go back into our surfaces toolbar. We're going to go to offset surface, our surface offset. I'm going to select this face here. This time not zero, I'm actually going to make it four. And you can see here, there's the four millimeters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that. And notice how I've now got a new surface, it's, but it's like it's floating in midair. Okay, I want to actually thicken that surface now. So in my surfaces toolbar, I'm going to go to thicken. I'm going to set the distance. I'm going to select this surface. And you can see there, and I want to uh, do six millimeters. Okay, I'm going to untick my merge result box. I want it to be a separate body. Okay, and it's very important here. You can see I want to thicken downwards. I want it to go down. So it's important here I select thicken side two. If I did this way, it would thicken both up and down. And if I did this one, it would just thicken upwards. So I want to go down into the body. Okay. So now that I've gone down into the body, accept that with the green arrow. And you can see here, it's after creating our button. Once again, I'll just open this up. You can see here now, it's after going down an extra two millimeters there. You can see it. Okay. We kind of have surfaces kind of uh, cutting into each other here. So that's why you kind of get this kind of weird line there. So there we have it. That's going to help uh, to create a button here where we, we can turn it on and off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the indent command again. It's already up here previously, so I'm going to use that again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a target body and a tool body. So my target body is this. My tool body is this. Okay. I want to cut and I want to set my distance here once again to be 0 0.2. Okay. I'm going to accept that with the green arrow. And there we go. Once again, put the section view on to see what I've done. And you'll see here, now we have clear lines between our structure. Okay, a clear gap that actually looks like a button. Okay, so there's our section view put in. Or sorry, our section view turned off and there's the button put in. Now what we want to do, <coughs> uh, we've selected the indent, we had the clearance. What we want to do now is we want to do on the front plane, we're going to do what's known as an intersection curve. So another trick here, and this is a really handy trick as well, if you're ever looking for a complex curve. So, I'll just read what it actually says out here. Now, we've done that. On the front plane, create a sketch. In the Tools tab, select Sketch Tools, and then select Intersection Curve, and in the Drawn area, select the top and side of the button. So I'm going to show you how to do that there now. So, up here to my Tools tab, I'm going to come down to my Sketch Tools, and what it's going to ask me to do is I want to select Intersection Curve. Here's our intersection curve. Now it's going to ask me to select the top of the button, and then I'm going to also select the side of the button. Okay, and what I want to do is click the green arrow to accept. I think, great to God, did I sketch? On, am I in a sketch on the front plane? I'll actually exit my sketch there, apologies. So I should be in the front plane. Apologies, I forgot to enter the front plane. So, I'll, so if you've done that, just X out of apologies. So front plane, sketch. Now I'm going to go to my Tools, Sketch Tools, and I want Intersection Curve, okay? I'm going to select the top, I'm going to select the side, and now because we're drawing on the front plane, what it's going to do is it's, help, it's going to help generate a sketch. So when I click on the green arrow, that's after helping to generate a sketch on the front plane for me based on the curvature of the object, and I'll accept that with the green arrow, okay? There is my sketch, okay? Looking straight at it. Okay, we've done that one now. Sorry, there, guys, the lights are just gone out. 
What we want to do now is we're going to do another spleen and we're going to do a little bit of a cut. So, just refer back out here. Now this is kind of a hard one to see. So this is what we're after creating. We selected the top and the side face and we're after doing uh, a little, you can see that a kind of sketch there. I'll zoom in this a little bit better. Now what we want to do now, and it's quite hard, you can see here we want to do a spleen from here all the way over to this point. And there's obviously certain dimensions on it then. We have an angle of 100 degrees, a uh, dimension from the origin, and then we have a 30 and a 68 degree angle there as well. So we'll just get that done. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our sketch toolbar. We're still in a sketch. We haven't left it. We're on the front plane. Go to my spleen. Now, very important, when I'm doing this sketch, do not select the midpoint of this line here. Maybe go about here or here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to do a line right to this point. And you can see there I can start to kind of distort it. But after I do that one, it's going to look like a straight line. But press escape. It looks like a straight line. It'll look like a straight line until we start to distort it ourselves. So if I click on it there, you can actually see here, if I grab this guy, I can start to distort it there. Okay? If I grab this one and pull it down that way. Okay. I want to now dimension that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set the distance on it. So sketch, uh, smart dimension. I want to select this guy. I want that to be 30. One of the parameters they give us on the sheet. And I also want this one to be 30. Just click anywhere along on the handle there, 3, 0, enter. Now what I want to do is I want the distance there, I want an angle. So I want, if I select this guy and this guy, I want that angle in there. I want to bring it out here. So just to do that again, I selected the handle, then this line. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to make this 100. Okay. I'm now going to make... The angle between this handle and this handle, I want that to be 68. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is I want a dimension from this point. Click on the point. Then out to the origin. I want that distance there to be 72.25 by the looks of it. And you can see there it's after jutting down a bit there. Okay. We're fully defined. We're happy with that now. Okay, all we want to do now is if I get my sketch tool, I'm going to go trim. There's an excess here. And on this one, I'm actually going to leave that one there. There's a line there, but I'm actually going to leave that because I need it for the reference, okay, of the dimension. So I'm going to leave that one. Now, I'm going to go up here to my features. Extrude cut. It's going to ask me to select the face. You can see there after selecting inside here, sketch region. So I'm after selecting there. Usually would automatically select the region, but because I left the line here, okay? But the reason I left the line there is because I needed it for the dimension. So I'm actually just going to say true all, and I'll actually say true all both, like that. Okay? Now it's not interfering with any other part of the object, so I'm happy with that. Otherwise, you could just do mid plane and set a dimension. But I'm just going to say true all both ways, and accept that with the green arrow. And look here, it's after changing our button again. Now what we're going to do with that button now is we're going to apply a little fillet to it. So go to my features, fillet. I'm going to set it at instead of 10 and 1. And just select this guy there. Green arrow to accept. So it's like there you can see there it looks like a button has been pressed down. Now to give it a little bit more uh, curvature I'm going to actually add in another little bit of a fillet there. I'm just going to add it into this one. Probably should actually Rather than doing an extra fillet, I'm going to click on this fillet and edit feature. And I'll also select this line there. Hopefully it allows me to select it. Not that one, I've already selected this one. It's not allowing me to select that, so apologies. Might have to select them separately. So if I go features, fillet, hopefully it'll allow us to do it this time. There we go, one millimeter as well. You can see there now, we've kind of got a nice curve section in there where it looks like a button will be pressed. Okay, you could also fill out this one and this one if you wanted. Okay, I actually will go back into this one now and just edit feature and hopefully I should be able to select this side. Yep, yeah. and this one. There we go. One millimeter all around. Okay, looks a little bit more smooth. Okay, less sharp edges. Right. So what we want to do now is we want to create the lamp bar. So, I'm just going to zoom out here. 
So it says here, this is the next portion, connection to lamp arm. On the front plane, draw a center line to the following dimensions. So it's not from the origin, but on the front plane, we're going to do a center line. That's 20 away from the origin, 65 degree angle, and it's 70 long. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So front plane, sketch. And now we're going to go and grab a center line, not on the origin, but along the base. At a random angle first spot, press escape to deactivate it. Smart dimension. I want the angle there between these two lines to be 65. I want the distance from the point to the origin to be 20. And I want the length of the line, not vertically, parallel to it, to be 70. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Once you've all those dimensions done, you're going to exit your sketch. Okay, so we've got a little line here going through the middle of the object. We're going to use that line to set up a plane. So if I go to Features, Reference Geometry, Plane, what we're going to do is we're going to select the first reference as the line, and then the second reference, we're going to select the top of the line. And it's going to select or bring in a plane that is perpendicular to that line. And now we're going to accept that. Okay, I can now click on this and hide it. Okay, I don't need that anymore. I could leave it there, it doesn't matter. If you have it there, it's absolutely fine. I might actually leave there as a guide. Okay, so there's our plane, which is now called plane two. Before I continue on, really quickly, uh, we had our split line. So button, button, there was our split line. I'm actually going to call it button split line. Sometimes I forget myself. Surface offset, that's fine. I'll leave that one ticking. So I'm going to call it button ticking. This is thicken up here, button thicken two. So it has a different name because that was thicken one, thicken two. And then we have indent. And I think we did an indent up here, button indent one. Yeah, I'll rename it. Button indent two. Uh, once again, I'm going to rename this one. Um, button surface cut. I'll get rid of extrude one. I'll just call it button surface cut. Okay, so I'm actually happy with that now. They've all been renamed. Now what we're going to do is on this plane here, we're going to do a little sketch. So I'm click on the plane and sketch. Now we're looking perpendicular to the plane, not the actual object anymore. So I'm going to do a sketch here and I'm going to do what's known as a slot. So you can see here, you've got a straight slot, center point slot. The one I'm actually going to do is the center point slot. Okay, so clicking on the origin or as close as I can get to the origin, I might actually do it off it. Click, do a line vertically up, click, and drag out, click. Okay, so what I want to do is I want the center point of the slot to be sitting on the origin. So if I click on the center point, and usually it allows you to click on this guy. There we go, I clicked on it there. And what I want to do is I want to, I'm sorry, I should have held down control. And what I want to do is when I hold down control, select the center point of the slot and then the origin. It mightn't come up, you can see there for me, it's not actually mapping for me, but if I click it here, hold down control, and as long as you're over it, click again, it's now clicking onto it. I want to pierce then. So if I click on pierce, it'll move onto it. Okay, now I'm going to dimension it. Smart dimension. The distance here, I want it to be 40. And the radius, I want to be 16. Okay, just confirm that. 40 and 16, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's pull that out there. And now I'm going to exit my sketch. Okay, so you can see a sketch there. We're after doing there on plane two. There we have it. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the top plane. So, I'm going to go top plane and sketch. Now, on the top plane, starting on the origin, I'm going to go for another straight slot, center point straight slot there. Click on this guy, go up, and drag out, and click. Once again, smart dimension. This time I want the line to be, I'm going to go this way. It's meant to be 45 based on the dimensions on the sheet. And the diameter is radius 20. So radius 20, diameter 40. And now we're after doing that sketch on the top plane. So once again, I'm now going to exit my sketch. Now what we want to do is we want to create a loft between those two sketches. 
I want to create a structure in between those. But I want that structure to follow um, guide curves, okay, which we've used in a previous video. So to do those, I'm going to actually create a curve on the front plane. So I'm going to hide my plane too now. You can see the sketches. I'm going to leave them active. But on my front plane, if I just click on it there, you can see the front plane is going through the middle of those two sketches. So front plane is appropriate one to draw on. So front plane, sketch. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a spleen again. I'm just going to show you what we're doing here. So you can see the sketches that we did here, here. Now what I want to do is on the front plane, I want to do a spleen from there and another one like this. Once again, applying the dimensions to change up the spleen. Okay, so grabbing your spleen, I'm going to start off right here at this point. I'm just going to do a straight line to this point here. That's it. Press escape to deactivate. I'm going to do the exact same with this one. From this point, all the way to this point here. You can see it kind of maps onto it. There you go. And once again, press escape. Now I know they look like straight lines. We're going to adjust those now by putting dimensions on them. So when I click on the line, you can see the handles kind of come in there in grey. Okay, so you can see the handles actually come in there in grey. So what I'm actually going to do with the handles is I'm going to grab those. And you can see here I can start to pull it. Okay, and this one I can start to pull it this way. Okay, and if I want, I can pull it out further like that. Very happy, okay. Now the first thing I want to do with this handle, once again, make it horizontal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now apply dimensions. So this one here, when I click on the handle, I want that to be 70. Just click on it. Smart dimension. I want that to be 70. When I click on this handle, smart dimension it. I want this one to be 330. Okay. And then what I need to do now is, I'm just looking at that handle there. We need to pierce that so we've got a horizontal one. And because that's looking like it's going out a little bit far. Get my smart dimension. A little bit there. I mean, did they give us an angle here? Sorry, just trying to find that there now. Looks like it's going 70 there, 330. That's fine. And out there. I'm actually going to give that an angle. See if I can do it that way. Click on this guy, click on this guy. Now that looks right. I'm going to set that angle there to be 145. Enter. And now, happy with that, click on this guy. And there we go. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that there now. So I clicked on the handle and I clicked on this line. I set it to 145. And that looks quite good to me there now. Okay. And then to finally dimension it, I'll get rid of this last dimension here. See the way it's still blue? Sketch, smart dimension. Select the spleen, saying uh, length 120, that's perfect, just accept that. Okay, now we're going to make adjustments to this one. So on this one here, I'm going to grab the handle, I'm going to slightly pull this handle in, and this one, I'm going to pull the handle out, like that. Okay, now that handle there, I want it to be vertical. Okay, and this handle here, I actually want it to be 90 degrees with this line. So sketch, smart dimension, click on the handle, click on this line, I want that to be 90 degrees. Okay. I also want the length of the handle. So when I click on any part of it and drag out and click, I want that to be 80. I want this one here. I think it's to be 140. So click on any part of it. 140. Okay. And I think we're good. And the last one, dimension the spleen. And I might actually have to dimension from the origin to the spleen. That's it. There we go. 20. There we go. There's our sketch fully defined, okay? So what we're going to do now is we want to exit out that sketch. And you can see there now we've got um, a straight slot here, a center point slot, a center point here, and we kind of have these curves then that are going to guide it. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go Features, Loft of Boss Base, and I'm going to select my profiles. The first one I'm going to select is you can select it from the drawing or in your design tree you can select them here, okay? I just usually select them from the drawing. So I'm going to select this one, and then I'm going to select this one. And you can see here, it's just going straight, okay? It's kind of linking with this one and this one, and make sure that obviously your points, otherwise it will start to distort there. So you have them in the right places. See there, as it's going around, 
we want it in the right places okay because when it went into the right place it's giving me a shape now i want to use a guided curve so select the guide curve, ta curve tab and in here i want to select this line click on the line and click green to accept and you can see there it's taking the shape of the line i now want it to take the shape of this line click on this one click on green to accept and you can see it's taking the shape of that one now that i've done that i'm going to accept that with the green arrow before you know it we've started to create our arm okay now with this sketch here i'm going to hide it so what i'm going to do now is that's that part of it done i've done my loft i'm now going to rename that and i'm going to call it i think it's arm support connection to lamp arm so i'm just going to call it lamp arm support so we'll rename that lamp arm loft is what i'll actually call it and once again capital l okay so there we have that section of it done the last thing we're going to do now here <clears throat> is we're going to do a little cut on this surface so i'm going to now do a sketch here click on this surface and click sketch okay we have a little bit of a complex sketch here now to do on this surface so just exit again there clicking on this surface sketch okay now that we're in that sketch okay we have a bit of a complex sketch to do here so the sketch actually involves and just refer out here to the object this is the sketch now we don't actually need the circle here but essentially on that sketch we want to create zoom in here so you can see it a bit better on that surface we want to do a straight slot and then we want to do an arc like that don't worry about the circle and obviously we have to apply all these dimensions 35 the gap here is 8 radius of 5 uh, the gap from here out to the top of the arc there is 12 and so forth okay so that's what we have to do and there's a little space here then of two so to do that once again we're going to just go to our sketch tool we're going to this time i'll just use a straight slot it doesn't matter okay i'll just go like this to this and there we go okay now the first thing really important i want this point here to be in line with the origin so if i click on this click on this i want to make them horizontal now that's after pulling up right in line with us that's the first thing i'm happy with that okay click on the center point of the slot then click on the origin and obviously select uh horizontal next thing we're going to do is we want to apply uh, a three point arc okay so not a center point arc not a tangent arc a three point arc so with three point arc selected i'm going to do about here click then click to about here and then i want to drag the arc and zoom in if you have to into the correct position something like that okay now that i've done that i'm going to go to my sketch toolbar trim entities there we go i'm going to get rid of that one that's fine i'm now going to go smart dimension so the first thing i want and i think it's after apologies there yeah no i'm happy with that that's horizontal that's fine sorry i thought it just went out of kilter there smart dimension i want the distance from here to here to be eight I want the actual distance for the line to be 35 okay now it's after going out of kilt there that's fine don't worry i want the radius of this guy to be five you can see it's after pulling back in there and i want the radius of this guy to be five okay now still looks like it's got obviously a bit of a bulge now i want this point and this point to be in line with each other so very important if i click this point and click Hold down control and click on this point and click horizontal okay it's after pulling in there right radius five. Oh yeah and sorry i also want the center point and this point to be horizontal there we go i knew there was a little bit of something going on there now i'm happy with that this guy here i'm going to pull him back in if it goes out it's a little bit of a funny sketch i'm going to smart to mention this now i want the gap here to be two and then this gap also to be two i want the distance from this line to the top i'm just thinking there i might actually have to do a center line sorry so i'll grab a sketch a center line i have to do a center line here center line from there to there and i want the smart dimension that center line i want that to be 12. okay now that's after conforming to the shape that we want so i think i'm actually quite happy here next thing i want to do oh yeah and it's after going out of there we go so it's after jumping out of sync there now again get rid of that way 
I want this guy and this guy to be horizontal. So there we go. That's right. I might have actually got rid of a, la a relation there by accident when I deleted a line. Okay, so just make sure that that's in line. Okay, so there's a little bit of complexity in doing that sketch there. There's obviously multiple ways you could go about it. And now there's our sketch. It's fully defined. I'm now going to go features, extrude cut. I simply want to cut that down into the object. And I'm just going to say blind. And the distance I want to set that to be is 40 millimeters. So it's gone down into the object 40 millimeters. Click on the green arrow to accept. Okay, so there's our objects done. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to rename that as click on it, F2, recess for R. Okay, now that we've done that, next thing you could do is obviously apply a little bit of colored uh, features to it. So I've got solid bodies here. If I click on this one, okay, I'll just go with this one here. I'm going to apply appearance to the body. I'm going to go with red for that one. So high gloss, just going to use what they have on the sheet. Oh, that's sorry that's actually the first one that's the one that we've actually hidden sorry so this is the fillet and then i got the recess yeah okay so what i'll actually do here is i'm actually just going to select the surfaces so if you click on each surface hold down control i have to select multiple ones here now all one go don't worry about that it's good little practice that's all that one i'm going to select the base Happy with that. I'm going to select them up to here, here. You can see it's here. It's a bit awkward when you haven't select these the whole way around. So all of that there, I'm actually going to make. Actually go with, I'll go with a high gloss. So I'd say face. I'll go high gloss. I'll actually go with the yellow. So there's all the yellow after coming in. Now what we want to do is we want to go with this one. Select this surface. Select the little surface in here. That's me just being picky. All those little guys just around it. Right click, appearance, face. With that one, I'm going to go high gloss again. And the red. And then for the button, click on this one, this one. And I'll zoom in there. You can see there's a little surface down inside there. I'm now going to make that a face again. Put the faces. High gloss. I won't go black. I'll go dark gray. Black is just a bit too dark. Dark gray, just as it appears there. There we go. There is our arm created, okay? So quite a bit of complex uh, kind of modeling in there, guys. Okay, you learned about some various different tools, the thicken tool, the surface offset, the indent tool, the split line, the intersection curve as well, okay? Which was, if I go in here, tool, sketch tools, and we had the intersection curve, a really handy one there. So a lot in that there, guys. And now in the next video, what we want to move on to is obviously creating the arm that will be slotting inside there. So that's that first video done, guys. I hope you found that helpful. All you would do then is you would actually save that into wherever your folder is. I'm going to go into my complete it and I'm going to call it, where is it gone? Study lamp. And I'm just going to call it study lamp base. Save that as that part. That part is now saved. That's the video done, guys. I hope you found that helpful.